Hello and welcome to another edition of Kimo Toaster Video Magazine. I'm your host, Jake Vickers. In this edition, we're going to explain Qmail taps. Uh, this is a feature that's been requested by a lot of people over the years, and it's been a part of Qmail Toaster in general for quite a while now. Uh, what Qmail taps do is they allow you to uh, do what's called tapping an email or domain, uh, in, which just in general terms means to make a copy of all incoming or outgoing emails for either a particular user or for an entire domain. And you send those off to a separate location, and that way you can have for the emails for archiving purposes or legal purposes. Now I know here in the United States where I'm located, uh, financial institutions are required to keep you a copy of all incoming and outgoing emails. Uh, also any company that is publicly traded uh, and a lot of uh, government organizations also uh, have to keep copies of all incoming and outgoing emails. You'll need to check what type of company you're setting this server up for and then uh, investigate what type of laws are required to uh, run a successful mail server for them. I also know that uh, the Keymail Taps patch and copying all of the emails does uh, fulfill or satisfy uh, some laws for German and Swiss uh, in those countries as well. They have some laws where uh, any email that gets accepted uh, by ISPs you have to keep a copy of um, and also any email that goes out for I'm not really sure the per period of time but I do know they have to keep a copy of it. Um, I know specifically for uh, those countries it's only for emails that you're accepting. Now the TAPS will not keep a copy of any emails that are blocked due to uh, blacklists or if you happen to be running a nice front end like Spamdyke uh, reverse DNS checks where the email gets uh, the connection gets denied and you're not actually accepting the email. I know in those countries you have to keep a copy of any email that you do accept uh, even if it is spam so if you get an email in and it is spam and spam assassin marks it you still have to keep a copy of it for legal purposes that may or may not be true for your organization and your server or your company you'll need to uh, check into the laws for that uh, to paraphrase that I give it to you kind of verbatim Qmail taps makes a copy of all incoming and or outgoing emails either for the entire server an entire domain or a specific user and it keeps a copy of any of those emails or taps them for any emails that it actually accepts that make it through any reverse DNS checks or SM uh, I'm sorry blacklist checks so if your server begins to accept the message then it will actually keep a copy of it regardless of whether or not it passes the spam tests or not uh, or even has a virus in it or not now a little caveat to this is you definitely need a separate domain to tap the email into otherwise you're going to create what's called a circular loop if you tap all of the email for one domain and you send it to uh, we'll use example.com so you're, you're tapping all of the email for example.com and you want it to go to the email address archive at example.com you're creating what's called a circular uh, well you're creating a circular issue there because any email that comes in is going to get tapped and it's going to go to archive example dot com which is getting tapped which is going to send another copy to archive at example dot com which is getting tapped which is going to and you can see where this is going to go uh, you end up being in a circular loop and it can really eat up some hard drive space and cause you some issues uh, pretty quickly so you definitely want a separate domain to tap the email into it doesn't necessarily have to be a real domain. You can, if you're just going to like tap all of the email for your work address or, or your work domain, you can just create, uh, say, your organization's uh, domain is example.com once again. You can create uh, local.example.com or fakeexample.com or whatever else you want to call it. It doesn't actually have to be a real domain if it's going to be on the same server. It only has to be a real domain if you're going to be sending or tapping all of those emails to a separate server. Then it will have to be a uh, actual real domain, or at least the other server will have to be set up to accept email for that domain if you're going to do some fancy stuff with SMTP routing and whatnot. So, 
I think we ought to go ahead and just kind of start jumping into it. Let's get logged into our system here. And just a little thing I always like to do, I always like to double check and make sure that my system is running, there's no crashes or anything. Uh, this is still the same system we set up in the previous videos. This is going to be the system that I pretty much work on throughout all of the videos. And for the purposes of this example, um, we're going to, uh, we'll show you a couple different scenarios. We're going to use example.com and the first thing you need to do is you need to get into your var uh, qmail control directory obviously that's where all of your control files are located and that's where you're going to need to do uh, all your configuration for qmail in general you get a directory listing here now the taps file is not created by default uh, you actually if the patch is in there but it's deactivated until you create the taps file so we'll go ahead and we'll create the taps file. It's just called taps. 